Okay, bad lighting. Good lighting. Better lighting. Lighting is one of the difficult things that I had to learn about this. Uh, you know, again, this book, go buy it from Amazon. It works. I mean, the chapter on lighting, I actually, the first, you open the book right here, and, <laughs> you know, the first shot you saw, the camera was pointing toward the sun. If the lens is pointing toward the sun or pointing toward the source of life, light, the camera's going to try to do all kinds of things in the computer to try to it's going to darken you out and you're just going to be a silhouette it makes you look like a serial killer or if you're interviewing your grandmother at the birthday party like we were talking last time and you have her next to the window you're going to make your grandmother look like a serial killer that's not what you want the light source pointing to the back of the camera for us the lighting is easy because we're in the outdoors and there's this big raging ball of plasma that just 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 floats across the sky every day. One of the things you're noticing right now, you, have you, do you notice how white everything is? That sun is really bright. That's the difficult thing. So when you're outdoors, they always talk about photographers talk about the golden hour. There's about an hour in the morning and in the evenings that's the lighting is perfect. I mean, come on, we're fishermen, right? I'm I'm not just because the lighting is perfect for photography doesn't mean the fish are gonna be biting then. One of the difficulties in what we have to deal with as fishermen out on the boat is we've got this bold-faced sun and there's just a you know, highly reflective surface of the water. Now what I have here, because of the shadow coming here, I don't want the actual camera getting into the shot, so we're kind of oblique. The sun is here the camera is here, right? So it's not directly back. So that way the shadows are falling off camera. That way you don't see the shadows. One of the problems is, is that it's just so stinking bright. So what do we do about that? Well, here we go. Okay, so better lighting still. What do we do? We just moved into the shadow of the trees. Now that big bold faced sun is being, the trees are acting like a screen, a filter. Uh, one of the other problems is, is as I'm looking up toward the camera, whatever glare is coming through the trees, you're actually seeing it on my glasses. And so I need to get some anti-shade, anti-glare on my glasses or, or whatever, uh, so it can make it harder to see my eyes. Again, when you're out there on the lake, it's a whole different story. All you have is bold faced sun reflecting off of highly reflective water. Because I have such a small boat, the camera is often very low in looking up while well, my face is toward the sky which is very bright and my face is very dark and it gets a very dark image so lighting is the most difficult thing that I'm still sorting out and working on in my videos that's one of the reasons why I want to build a longer wider boat so that I can uh, actually raise the camera up and look down as opposed to having the camera low and looking up you will still have the reflective of the surface of the water but the water is generally a darker color than the sky if you're catching a big fish like I caught the big trophy fish a while back the last thing on my line my my uh, mind was lighting I could have lit that better I could have tried to turn the road up boat around better to have the, the sun on my face at the cameras back and try to get a better shot but I was way more concerned with getting returning that fish back to the water safely than I was about getting pictures. So I took whatever pictures I could as quickly as possible and then returned the fish to the water and just dealt with a really bad, what was really bad lighting or rather bad use of lighting. Uh, I'm, I'm not good at lighting stuff on the inside of the house at all. I do know that the same principle applies. You don't want to sit by a window the camera's gonna light the window up and darken you out and again, make you look like a serial killer. Light hitting your face and then the camera sees that light brightening up your face and it'll brighten you up, right? It's just what the camera automatically does. Another thing, with these cameras, these uh, SLR cameras, I think it's called shutter priority mode where you have control over the shutter speed. I run my cameras at 1 50th. I forget exactly what that means. I think 1 50th of a second shutter speed or whatever. 1 40th or 1 50th for video. And then the camera adjusts the aperture of the lens and the sensitivity of the uh, sensor on its own. So it's automatically making adjustments for the lighting for me and I just, mess with the shutter speed however I want it. If I were doing some high speed stuff, I'd crank up the shutter speed and put it on 60 frames a second. You can see every single, the slow shutter speeds, 
you see that I'm waving? You don't actually see my hand waving, right? If I cranked up the shutter speed, it would look like fake TV or something. Right there, that actually looks natural because we don't see that. It's just a blur to the natural eye. And when you, see, and when you look at a lot of really high-tech cameras, you won't see that blur. You'll just literally see the hand moving and it just looks a little freaky. It looks like it was photoshopped or something. That's because the camera is just that accurate in capturing the action. That blur is something that the human brain needs and that's why I have those settings. And so my friends, that is a quick lesson on lighting in your, um, in your fishing videos.